Hello and welcome to Access Chat. Delighted to welcome Laura and Tom from Ramble Tech. Um, so this is a great example of our community bringing together some innovation and highlighting to us. So you came to us via our own audience. So this is this is fantastic because we want to grow the the community of people doing great stuff around disability. So um, I know a bit about Ramble Tag, and I know that you were a finalist in the RNIB Innovation of the Year Awards in 2019. But Laura, um, tell us a bit more about who you are, what you've done, and how you and Tom come to be working together. Yep. Hi, um, I'm Laura. This is Tom. And uh, we are neighbours. So um, we basically, I, I would help Tom walk his dog. And we found that we were just kind of struggling, um, keeping keeping together or keeping pace uh, on one of our walks. And uh, we were just kind of bantering and decided, you know, that this could be a better solution. So um, we we started from there. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. that that's um, we we had a conversation just about um, um, if there was something we might be able to come up with um, to allow the dogs uh, a bit of leeway it, um, for us to you know um, obviously for Laura to guide me and uh, that's how the secure. the ramble tag came about. Mm -hmm. So, because we're neighbours, we just kind of let the idea flow straight away and uh, went with it. And we we developed a, a prototype that night, and just from there, it, it snowballed. Yeah. So, so for those of um, those that don't know, the ramble tags it is is like a strap with a mm -hmm. handle that you can help guide someone. Because when I you know, oh, you got one perfect. I've got one just handy. Hold, <laughs> hold, <laughs> hold it to the camera. Right. Yeah. So I'll just describe it. So it's basically a flat harness. Is that held up okay? Up a bit more. Yeah. A bit more. That's it. Super. Right. So a flat harness, two Velcro straps, um, with a little handle that extends out, and it's worn around the upper arm of the guide. So it just wraps around, like so, around the arm, and then it allows just an alternative. A way to be guided that we feel is, you know, more more secure than holding for us, you know, than holding an elbow or linking an arm because we had that wee bit of extra freedom to move and um, not so restricted, but you know, it's still feeling secure for both of us. Um, yeah. I, I've never guided anyone before, so you know, for me, it felt like um, I, I had a, I had Tom safe. It felt a lot more uh, secure for him, and uh, for him, he just felt a lot more free and able to uh, go go at his own pace and let our dogs pull us around. <laughs> uh, it, it worked really well for me, um, simply from the uh, flexibility, um, yet you know, knowing that uh, I had that contact uh, with Laura, um, so it's um, it, it worked out really well. For us, um, in that um, you know, specifically uh, for walking the dogs, and then obviously um, we started really to think about it and whether that um, it could be adapted or used uh, for people in a similar sort of circumstances, or to branch out into you know, uh, guiding for a, you know a variety of applications. Like within the the first, um, you know, when we did our Kickstarter campaign and got a lot of support, and it, you know, finished that, and then instantly we got contacted by Glasgow Airport. So they were the first ones to kind of, you know, initially we just thought something for people to use daily, and then it was then that kind of came to us like these are going to be great for uh, assistance as well. So that was quite an exciting wee uh, eye opener to where it could go. Having guided a few people myself, I've you know I can say how uh, as a novice how awkward you feel and how nervous you get that you're not going to walk someone into a pavement or and you know, you know knowing you know well which bit do I hold on to which bit do they mm -hmm. want to hold on to so having a handle um, that they can grab onto 
you, know, you with makes a lot of sense. And I also think that it's, it's yeah, you're, for airports and, and public places where you've got a rotating staff that may not necessarily have like, training on how to do this right, giving mm -hmm. them a tool makes a lot of sense because they put that on, they can feel confident and uh, the person that they're guiding also then you know knows what to expect too. You're setting yeah. expectations. Yeah, it's consistent. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that their the handle is going to be a certain size. That's what they're holding. You know, there's a you can everyone can learn a wee technique where you just I just tell Tom to put his hand up and I just hook it on rather than him looking for me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's just a, a consistent sort of uh, way we of doing things that we think would make things you, you know le less less. Uh, yeah, just ease a wee bit of anxiety when travelling. Uh, can you can you tell us about uh, uh, how this uh, was ex uh, accepted from the part of the airport staff? Uh, how they manage this and how you how the, how they end up uh, working with this with with other people who also uh, need it. Uh, basically, um, when you travel, um, you're supposed to. Um, when you book your travel arrangements, you're supposed to um, alert the airport that you will require assistance. Um, on arriving at the airport, um, they will, you know, uh, you 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 say, well, uh, if it's a visual impairment that you have, um, if they have the ramble tag as they do at Glasgow. Um, then they will suggest to you they will offer you this as a way of getting through the airport um, uh, to go to whether it be your the, the the departure gate or directly to the aircraft. So it means even though you are accompanied, you know, with another traveller, the obviously the airport know the correct route to um, arrive at your d destination without fuss and bother. So basically, the visually impaired person hooks up with the assistance person at the airport, and the person they're travelling with gets to trot along behind carrying the luggage. I noticed in some of the pictures that you share with us, that there were other examples of using it. Can you share that with us, please? Uh, well, we've got so we've got a few arranged now, and like we've had people using small ones worn on the wrist for like guide running. Um, so there's a sort of sporty aspect of it, um, and we've got you know the the standard ones just for either daily walks we've got walking groups uh, you know a walking group have just ordered a wee batch today and you know they, they they love them for going out and just walks in the park you know whatever um and then yeah assistance so we've um ibrox uh, football stadium um they are using them as well so they they were quite quickly big fans and for getting through Someone, one of the football fans described them as getting through the crowds. You know, they're weaving through rather than um, they're just a lot more confident to be in the crowds rather than uh, waiting for them to pass and then and then going through. So uh, probably it's not happening, but is the football club branding it? Because that we, be we, we've that. Tried. <laughs> we do push. <laughs> we we do some nice designs and send them and say, hey, you know, what what about this? And they say, how much is that? It will just go for unbranded. So ideally, that would be lovely. And you know what we would want all the different sort of airports and um, you know, uh, nice Etihad and well, I don't want to name one and not others, so uh, delete that. <laughs> lots lots, lots sure. of different uh, logos. Um, Edinburgh Airport uh, oh. took it upon themselves um, to have um, the Rambo tags designed uh, to match with their, um, their corporate identity, I suppose. So we created them um, nice purple uh, coloured ones for them, yes. uh, which are uh, marked with the they have their logo and um, uh, Edinburgh Airport. 
In fact, Laura's got one to show you. Yes, sorry, yeah. it's there. So uh, they they were quite proud to have them, and they they have the neat box as well. So um, yes. folk will book in via the neat box and um, get uh, offered the ramble tag for use if they're visually impaired. That's great. Uh, we're big fans of Gavin. Deborah, you had a question. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it seems like the, um, this would help people um, more than just the part of the, you know, the visually impaired and blind community. I know mm -hmm. that and sometimes people with autism, for example, they don't like to be touched and mm -hmm. it's really in, in, you know, intense environment with all these people at you. It seems like that would be a benefit. It seems like there would also be a benefit um, for someone like my husband who has dementia. It, it's something like this would be helpful for him as well. So I was just wondering if y'all have taken, if if the people that are using, the, the places I should say, that are using them, um, are they are they also using them for other people um, with disabilities that might need assistance as well? Um, that that we know of, not currently. Um, the the Ibrick staff did did say similar. You know that they 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 thought they could be used. You know for for autism specifically as well. Um, it's I think because when we started out, it was our focus to you know gain the support of like. Um, that and IB and, and really get it into market that people understood, you know, what we designed it for. And then kind of, you know, we're, we're obviously open to helping as many people with them as possible. Um, but as far as uh, approaching that directly, we've, we've not done yet, but there's definitely, you know, space for people to use them in, in that way. Um, I think uh, Liz had said that that she had a blind and autistic um, a teenager using it, and you know he loved it because of the not not liking touch. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I can see lots of lots of uses, particularly like the uh, the stuff around ath athletics and uh, guided running. There's mm -hmm. a, a a chap that I'm in contact with out in uh, Spain that does a lot of athletics i'll try i'll make him aware yeah of, of this so, yeah, it's, uh, it's so, another method doesn't it mm -hmm. so i mean what are your backgrounds because if you're just neighbors and you raise ra uh, you know raise the money through kickstarter are you doing this full time now is this is this or is this still a passion project and a sideline and you've got other other you know, pots boiling at the same time <laughs> well, I, I'm a, I'm a self-employed dog walker and have been for ten years. So you know that that keeps the <laughs> the roof over your head. But every because we're neighbours, basically, you know, we can work in the evenings. Tom, Tom works a lot during the day. He spends you know the day on the phone. I'll I'll look up phone numbers and um things at night and contacts on Twitter and stuff. And then uh, Tom goes at it on the phone the next day. Um, so he's the uh, mm. you're the, the the chat king. We're still at um, hobby status, um, but hopefully um, as we progress and the ramble tag improves in style and uses, that um, maybe we might earn a penny or two <laughs> from it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, we would love to. Uh, you know, I would love to work full time on it. But as as it stands now, it's it's really pushing it out there, getting the idea spread, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, you've got you've got to do what what's sensible at the start. Yeah, so I I think that it's a it's a great example of how simple things can really work, because mm -hmm. often we 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 end up. Uh, uh, we all, all three of us work in some form of technology, uh, yeah, and and a lot of the time it's it's easy to think that tech is the answer. And actually, what you've got here is it's not a high tech solution, but it's a perfectly you know it's it's a really easy serviceable one. You know, we're mm -hmm. not trying to link people up with like. Bluetooth connection and proximity <laughs> sensors and all of this kind of stuff, because I do think that sometimes we over engineer things just for mm -hmm. the sake of 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 
you know, saying we've got the the latest technology. Mm -hmm. So, we, we, um, go on. Um, we did um, uh, have some uh, concerns um, about with traditional guidance methods about um, uh, visually impaired who are um, accustomed to, you know, the um, cup and elbow method. Um, and whether the ramble tag, um, would it be subtle enough to transmit, you know, the physical uh, directions, um, you know, and that the visually impaired person could um, uh, realise them as well as their, their audio guidance. So we took it upon ourselves to um, develop another ramble tag, mm -hmm. which we've called the Metro tag. I think Laura's just going to show you uh, what this one looks like. Is that good up there? Yeah. yeah, no, no, down a bit. Down a bit? Down. Yeah, that's it. The difference with this one is that the handle is, is flush. So okay. rather, rather than it hanging out, it, we, we had a, a, a wee bit of a um, resistance from traditional guides it felt you know with the information not passing through um so we, we kind of thought well something for busier spaces where you want to be a bit closer and you don't need the full uh, tag although we love our original is to give the option of people that maybe want to have a uh, more closeness um and a wee bit more information feeding mm -hmm. um through the movements of the arm um so that's been one of our uh, you know, main things is to get everybody on board, visually impaired people and the guides, the, the traditional guides. Um, we, we don't want to take away from anything like that, but we want to add, you know, add these options into it for, you know, get people with various degrees of sight loss that might prefer one to the other or just um, depending on what environment they're in, it uh -huh. might be more suited to use one or the other. So um, just another choice. Uh -huh. We'd like to, to to you know cover the board. If if you want to walk in the country or you want to hang around railway stations suspiciously, <laughs> or uh, if you want to go for a jog in the park, um, you know, ramble tag hopefully is something for you. As you would probably be well aware, um, inclusion is all very well, but we. Feel and I feel particularly strongly that without choice, then inclusion is, you know, impossible. Right. Will we hand over to Deb? I, Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I have a, a couple of questions, and they're not necessarily. Um, um, well, I, a couple of questions I have are like, I assume that as an individual, you can buy them yourself so that you can, you don't have to wait for the, the airport or the sports arena to have them there. Uh, and I also would just be curious, because this is the way my mind works, uh, about um, do, do whenever the airport gives them out or the sports arena gives them out, does the person get to keep them or do they give them back oh. when they're, they are at their place? So, and then the third point I wanted to make was just like, I, and, and, and Neil sort of hit upon this, um, but it's just, we have seen since man began, um, and we we started tracking things. We see people with disabilities being innovator, people with disabilities, and people that love people with disabilities being innovators to help solve the problems that society has put upon people with disabilities because it's not accessible. So I think this is just another example of the individuals that need choices coming up with the solutions and being the innovators. So I I just want to compliment y'all on that. And then <laughs> I was just curious about those other two questions and. Then I'll turn it back over to uh, Antonio. Uh, well, Laura, can you explain to Deborah that it's you know it's the guide and it's the stadium who purchase them, so mm -hmm. that it's not returning it. That, uh -huh. that you know the, the person being guided will be escorted to seat, uh -huh. and then so. Well, and, and, well yeah. I don't need to explain it. He's so, <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, so the staff wear them. You did uh, good. <laughs> I don't know, don't know why I was given. <laughs> well, I thought you, you, you 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can, we sell them on our website um, and also the RNIB sell currently just our original one. Um, so we're speaking with them to hopefully take on the new models as well. The Metro tag. The Metro tag and, you know, the, the latest version of the original, which we changed the interior of because we, although not many people said that, a few people said on certain fabrics it could slip. So we've altered the material for inside um, for the likes of high vis, you know, more shiny fabric. It, it sits better on that. So. Yes, you can buy from the shop, and no, they don't lend them out because they know they would never get them back. <laughs> uh, and they cost um, £23 is the original one, and the small ones for sports running are £21. And then we have another one, just to complicate matters, which we developed with the rail stations in mind because we knew they were very conscientious about health and safety and what classed as quick release. So. We um, created one with a quick release buckle, buckle and that's £25 just now. That's on sale. Uh, but yeah, we, we did that as a kind of trial to experiment with what could be classed as quick release if something like a big company wanted them for environments that they, you know, had a lot of moving machinery or trains or, or things like that. Excellent. Um, I, I, and I think that. I really like the fact that you've you're doing the stuff with Edinburgh Airport, where Gavin from Neatbox is doing stuff too. Mm -hmm. I think this is this is a great example of how um, you, we can create an inclusive ecosystem where companies are opening the door for other companies that are also innovating and and, and welcoming people in to participate in in the space. So. Mm -hmm. You know, he he's got a high tech solution. You've got uh, a a low tech solution, but they're very complementary. Yeah. Don't know if I like that. <laughs> you do <don't> here. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. But it's but it, it's it's not. It's you're not embedding computer chips, and you know oh, what? Low not... low tech is robust, right? It's uh, yeah. yeah. So you may be using high tech fabrics, but it's not going to run out of battery power anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. We, we we love like the the neat box that we you know if people are like Jonathan who might be on the chat um yeah. you no know, he's used it a few times at Edinburgh where he's booked it and booked the ramble tag and yeah, there's lots of situations where it needs the it needs something like that to it's not ramble tag is not the only solution it's got to be that the companies that are using them if it's real companies. They know the people are coming and they expect them and they, they're prepared for them and everything. Mm. Like we, we've traveled a lot and um like there's although going the, the leaving journey's fine. Mm -hmm. Um we've been quite a few times let down by assistance and it wouldn't matter whether they were wearing one or not because they've not turned up. Um so you know there's that side mm. of thing. There's a whole wee network of things that obviously need mm. to come together. Mm -hmm. For for it to to work properly, I, yeah. I think I, I think the solution um, lies in you know we need continuity. We, we, I think it would be great that um, whatever your disability, if you knew what to expect, then it would make travelling, for example, a whole lot easier. I think that uh, it's the case that. Um, um, you know, physically able and sighted people have concerns about travelling, whether it be about the weather or what clothes to wear. But you know, for a disabled person uh, to have, uh, you know, taking account of their disability puts a far bigger, you know, pressure on them. And I think that, um, as you were saying, if you know what you're going to expect. Then there's not going to be any surprises for you, and it hopes it makes your um, travelling um, a lot better. Yeah, I, I think that the people don't really realise just how much planning goes into travelling um, mm -hmm. for for a lot of people with with disabilities, because you you know you got to you've got multiple additional layers of logistics so if you've got a guide you've got to make sure that your guide's available you've got to make sure that the 
you know, if, if you're using a wheelchair, you've got to think about, you know, wheelchair accessible um, places of transport. So you may end up doing a much longer journey in order to go by public transport, yeah, accessible taxis, whether or not they're actually going to, you know, um, accept wheelchairs, but also whether they'll accept guide dogs, because mm -hmm. we frequently hear um, tales of, of companies that despite the legislation still don't allow guide dogs mm -hmm. um, and um, you know that's that's a real problem so not only um, knowing what you should expect but yes you're right that consistency of service because although you should expect some of this stuff to happen it still doesn't as you already alluded to and, and, and then also, I think Antonio was mentioning um, in our chat window that airports are again different in terms of services and how they treat people. And, and I've heard quite a lot of tales about people um, being met at the airport and you know, being put into a wheelchair uh, when they don't need to be, and they're quite happy to walk and be guided. So um, that was their massive motivation, like. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tom's travelled and been offered the wheelchair and uh -huh. not been impressed. No, it upsets me a great deal. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and also, if someone has a guide dog and they're offered a wheelchair, a, you know, the, it's hard to have the dog and a wheelchair or the buggy with the, you know, how does the dog get on the buggy and all that kind of thing. So, yeah. 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 So, so. So Tom, you, you mentioned that it upsets it, it upsets you. I mean, sorry to pick at an open wound, but but why do you think that people make an assumption that you, as someone who is blind, mm -hmm. need to be in a wheelchair? That's a question and a half, my good man. I've absolutely no idea. The fact, the mere fact that I possibly walk to the assistance desk and say, you know, I'm you know, needing some help to get on the right platform and they produce this thing, or even worse, a big giant yellow buggy electric <laughs> thing that goes, ah, ah, ah. Yes. Why on earth they think I want to sit in that and look like an the idiot? <laughs> I don't know. So When we have used it, we do, do the Queen's Wave. <laughs> <laughs> The reason, I think the reason why they offer the wheelchair is because they don't have an alternative and that's where uh -huh. hopefully we come in. Uh, we yeah. need choice. We need choice. Yeah. Let, us, let us people with disabilities say to them, I want to do it my way. And if Frank can do it, so can we. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and, and thank you for enabling other people to do it their way as well. So we need to thank our our supporters, yeah, Barclays Access, Microlink, and, and MyClearText for keeping us on air and keeping us accessible. We look forward very much to, us, uh, to jo you joining us on Access Chat this Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Great fun. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>